Hey guys, welcome to a super quick fix tutorial. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Adobe Premiere Pro. I love the features, the ecosystem and all of the plugins, but I hate the technical issues, the freezing, the crashes and oh my God, the lagging. <clears throat> just like that. Now I have recently discovered why most of my Premiere Pro projects ended up being laggy and in this video I want to share with you four potential reasons why your Premiere Pro project is laggy and how to fix them. Now, if like me, you tend to upgrade to the latest version of Adobe Premiere Pro, the most likely reason that your project is so laggy is that you're using a project file that was created in an earlier version of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, when you open it with that latest version, it'll ask you, do you want to convert it? Don't fall for that. That is the most likely reason why that project ends up being so laggy. But before I talk your face off, let's look at a real world example and show you how to fix it. Here we are in Premiere Pro CC 2020 and this is literally the last project that I worked on. And if I scrub through this, you may notice that this is actually pretty laggy. If I try to play it back, to work on that. So just be aware, it's a good second or two before it even starts playing back. And to me, this is a pretty bad editing experience. So let's get this fixed. Let's come up into file. Let's close all of our projects. Let's create a brand new project. I'm going to call this one fixed project. Simply hit OK. And now I want to re-import that old project into this brand new one. So let's just double click here to import some footage. I'm going to select that old project file, hit open. And I'm going to select to import the entire project because I want to import the entire contents of this previous project into this new one that I just created. Let's hit OK. Give Premiere Pro just a second. And here is my old project structure back. If I now open this sequence and again, give Premiere Pro just a second to think. And if I scrub through this, now this actually does work a whole lot better. Now it's not perfect and if I play it back, shots. Yep, that went off straight away. Now it might still take a second or two and it may not be perfect, but for me, just creating a new project and re-importing that old file has off just kicked something loose in Premiere Pro and the whole thing went a whole lot smoother. So give this a try. It might just fix the issue for you. Another reason for why your Premiere Pro project may be laggy are corrupted media cache files. Now, as you work in your Premiere project, that writes a whole bunch of cache files to your hard drive to work a bit faster. But if those files become corrupted, that can drag down your project. It can also make it impossible to import files again, especially if they're using the same file name. So let's jump into Premiere Pro, check out where we can find those media files and how to flush them. Back in Premiere Pro, in order to find where your cache files are being saved, simply come into the main menu under Edit, Preferences and Media Cache. You will find a folder location. This starts out as being a temp location, but you can define your own cache folder where you want those files to be saved into. To flush this cache, you can simply hit Delete on that. Say yes, I want to delete all unused media cache files. Hit OK. Now, because this won't delete files that are currently open by Premiere Pro, what I prefer to do, I actually prefer to close out Premiere Pro. Let's bring up an Explorer window and let's just navigate to the folder where all these files are being saved in. For me, that's cache Premiere Pro. And there's still quite a bit of stuff here. I like to just select all of it and just flush that out. And you will only be able to do that once Premiere Pro is closed because otherwise it'll hang on to some of these files. Also, the other thing I would recommend is check the locations that Premiere Pro usually saves these files to because sometimes it seems to still save to the old locations. On Windows, that is under your C drive. If you come into Users, under your username, for me that is Tobias, under App Data, and this is a hidden folder that you may have to enable. So you may have to go to View and enable to show hidden items. So you can see this App Data folder, jump into that, under Roaming, there's Adobe and under Adobe, you'll find common. And don't worry, I'm going to put these folder locations both for Windows and for Mac into the video description. So you can just check those out. And in here again, you'll find media cache, media cache files, peak files, team project cache files. All of this is temp data. I recommend every now and then just cleaning that out. It can make your projects slow and laggy. And I don't know why Premiere Pro sometimes still writes to these locations, even if your media cache file in Premiere Pro is configured to point somewhere else. But just worth checking, go in here, flush this out, and it might just help make Premiere Pro run a little bit better again. 
Another potential reason for Premiere Pro being laggy is that the project file itself that you're working with contains too much clutter. Like you've imported whole folders of media that you recorded into it, but you're only using some of them. So let's look at how you can clear out your project file, remove duplicates and flush all of the stuff that you don't actually need. Cleaning clutter out from your Premiere project is actually pretty straightforward. Now let me open up a folder under footage. Here I've created one called clutter, which includes some files that aren't actually used as well as a whole bunch of duplicated files. And that might happen if you work on a project and you get media files from different locations. So it might just end up being a bit cluttered. So in order to clean that out, simply come to edit and you have two options here. Remove unused will remove any files that you're not using in any of your sequences. So let's hit that first. That already dumped a whole bunch of stuff from this folder. Let's come up into edit again. Remove unused is no longer available because there are no unused files, but we can still consolidate duplicates. So files that have been imported multiple times into the project and are used can then be consolidated. So let's select that. Now that hasn't changed anything visible in the folder structure, but now if there was a case where you had the same file imported multiple times into the project and used multiple times in the sequences, those would have been consolidated and collapsed into one. And again, this can just help reduce the overhead of Premiere Pro scanning through these files all the time because now everything is just nice and clean. Finally, and I'm pretty sure you know this already, you need to make sure that Premiere Pro has enough system resources, memory and CPU power allocated to it to work properly. Now, Premiere Pro, same as After Effects and a few other applications tend to be pretty big memory hogs. And if they don't have enough to work with, they just kind of grind to a halt and get really slow and laggy. So again, let's jump into Premiere Pro and check out some of the settings and what I personally set them to. The most important settings for Premiere Pro can be found under the main menu under Edit, preferences and under memory. And in here you can define how much memory you're going to allocate to Premiere Pro or how much memory you're going to leave for any other applications. And I'm saying leave six gigabytes for any other applications other than Premiere Pro. So Premiere Pro has 58 gigabytes of RAM to work with, which is pretty humongous. Now I have a pretty huge amount of RAM. I've got 64 gig of RAM installed. For most editing, 16 gigabytes is fine. 32 is generous, 64 is pretty excessive, but I do work with some heavy media and I do a lot of other 3D work as well. So in here, just make sure that Premiere Pro has at least four gigabytes to work with. At least eight would be better. The other thing as well, down here, you can optimize rendering either for performance or your memory. Now, if you have very little RAM, you may have to optimize for memory, which gets Premiere Pro to write more files to your hard drive and read them back in. So editing might be a bit slower, but it won't collapse the rest of your system. If you have enough RAM, just set this to performance to give Premiere Pro the biggest chance of actually working well. Another slightly more technical thing you can do is make sure that the process for Premiere Pro that is running on your computer has enough CPU bandwidth or priority assigned to it. On Windows, you can do that by bringing up the task manager. In here, if you find Premiere Pro, you can expand this tab here. Right now it's running multiple processes, it's running Dynamic Link Manager, as well as the actual Premiere Pro process. So right click that, go to Go to Details, which is going to take you over to the Task Manager Details, which shows you all of the technical processes running on your machine right now. So simply right click onto this Premiere Pro process. And in here you have an option to set priority. Right now that's set to normal. I can bump this up to above normal, high or real time. This means allocate more CPU time, more CPU percentage to this particular process. Now that will impact other applications on your system. They'll be running slower while Premiere Pro will be running faster. Sometimes this is worth doing just for a heavy export or something and then bring it back down to normal. But usually for the most part, I just leave this on normal. And if I'm exporting something heavy, I'll just go make a cup of tea. Now you can do something very similar on Mac OS and Linux and other systems as well, but that does get a bit too technical. Just know that you can both bump up the memory as well as the CPU performance that is available for Premiere Pro to work and bumping up either or both of those settings should hopefully help make your editing workflow a little bit quicker. Hopefully you found that useful for me because I always like to upgrade to the latest version of Premiere Pro. Most of my issues went away by just not using a project file that was created in an earlier version of Adobe Premiere Pro. But hopefully there's some other fixes in here for you that'll solve the issue for you. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.